Hello there. Um, my name is Chris Chalkley. Um, have all of you heard of a place called Stokescroft? Has anybody heard of Stokescroft? A few. Okay, good. All right, well, Stokescroft is a small area of Bristol that um, missed all development. It had massive dereliction. Um, about seven years ago, uh, my business... Uh, as a small trader, as a wholesaler, collapsed and I moved the remnants of that business into Stokes Croft um, into an art studio. And as I used to drive into work every morning, I'd see um, the council busy painting grey squares over any artwork that was painted in there. This is an area of 30% der dereliction and a very deeply rooted graffiti culture. So you'd have this bizarre situation that, that one minute they'd be um, painted, usually fast and not very well because of the speed element, and then the following day painted out by the council. I'm going to show you just uh, in a very fractured fashion some of the stuff that has gone on in the last seven years to get us to where we are today. And I took this photo yesterday, and this is in the, at the bottom of Stokes Croft, in a, an underground, uh, uh, a, a, on a roundabout. It's the, probably the busiest roundabout in Bristol. This is called the Bear Pit, this space. It was formerly called St. James Barton Roundabout and was a place that the council, because there were five different organisations all responsible for it, were unable to sort out at all. So a community group started and we started to paint down there and do all sorts of cool things. Um, and under the guise of some money from the Arts Council, we got some money to do some artwork down there. And we built that cube, which looks suspiciously like an advertising board. And it has allowed us to, to actually let a, a, a protest group from Bristol to use to talk about real issues. And for me, this is one of the most significant events that's happened in Bristol since Banksy. When we were talking about money, that space, the corporate advertising boys offered us 40 grand a year for that space. So when we talk about taking a corporate dollar, it is at that scale. So, you know, principles. So I see it as significant because it's actually about a debate about advertising at its most fundamental. And it's quite interesting that it's perfectly acceptable to have a sports direct advert there. That's the same operation that um, Ed Miliband was just been slagging off. And to have those two together, it's the beginning of that debate. And so I'm hoping that we are going to have a proper rock and roll debate about that, particularly as next year is Bristol Green Capital, so the eyes of the world be, will be upon us and we can be even naughtier than we normally are. <laughs> so all this started with a piece of derelict land that my ex-wife and myself owned in, in the centre of Stokescroft, and that was the very first thing that got painted on it prior to doing another mural. Um, Stokescroft was like this, boarded up. This is now a massive community centre, which is all self-funded. This is the state of dereliction. These are the kind of walls that were um, typical of the boarding up that was in this area. And in December 2006, I painted this mural. And as I was painting it, people kept going, are you allowed to do that? And I said, I should fucking well think so. It's our, our wall. <laughs> And in that moment, it became quite apparent that the role of the state in this area was to stop shit happening. So um, we joked and joshed about the idea of, of um, in the style of the Pimlico comedies, to declare our own republic. And that was the genesis of a, a, the idea of a, a bottom-up approach to changing it without any money. So we started to do it do that fence every year, every, every month. It became like an outdoor gallery. The idea, the concept was outdoor gallery. So on this one, we just put up rectangles of wood and, and said to anybody who walked up, 
the only rule is that there are no rules. And they would go, oh, fuck, oh, no rules. Um, and what actually happened is we had the most extraordinary outdoor gallery that nobody touched. And this is an area absolutely known for um, vandalism, or supposedly. This is a mural by Felix Braun, um, who, uh, if you, you can't see it, but this, here it says, I must not write on walls, I must not write on walls. He spent three days writing, I must... So, so that was indicative of the frustration that was within the... And, and the modus operandi was... All of the walls we did, like this next wall, this was a building, another building that's been derelict and is still derelict. We would patch up all the holes on it. We would sweep the pavement perfectly clean and then we would paint it. And this particular mural is about cars and the way we're heading because it's actually, in 50 years' time, the projections are there will be five, more, five times more cars in the world than there are now. So it's absolutely pertinent in a street that is completely beset by urban pollution. So, political. We marked out the territory by painting the bins. These were the council's bins. They really didn't like that. They really didn't like that. And then, because they weren't recycling bins, we got hold of some ordinary wheelie bins, we made our own recycling bins and put them out and then phoned the council up and said they'd better pick them up and sort them out. <laughs> they didn't like that. They actually said they weren't sorted out well enough, and therefore they took them away. So we repainted all these bins, saying these are not recycling bins. <laughs> so, you know, what I'm really pointing up is, you know, what we're doing is actually getting under their skin and changing political consciousness through the artwork. This is the basis here. It's not a very good picture. I was in a bit of a rush picking out the pictures this morning. Here it says, Stokescroft. Uh, Bristol's cultural quarter and at that time everybody would have pissed themselves laughing if, if they thought that that was Bristol's cultural quarter it, it was a place where you would before you get in there you'd get your head down and not look left or right till you got to the other side because it was full of street drinkers and people beg money off you and all that kind of business that little sign was, has, is still there today and is underneath a massive advertising hoarding um, and is arguably the most significant piece of street art for the area. Meanwhile, the council's still busy with their little rollers, <laughs> going at it. And this was a watershed moment, because it's all about push. This mural we got permission for, um, and it was painted, and on the basis of one, one complaint from one person, the anti-graffiti team painted it out. They, they're called Clean and Green, the anti-graffiti team were in those days. Um, so, we painted that on it. This Jan Ormadroid was the head of Bristol City Council, and she was inundated with emails. <laughs> and then the council's legal department... <laughs> then the council's le legal department um, said, could you please remove it? And I said, uh, no. <laughs> um, and um, in the end, they threatened the owner that that building was grade two listed and if they didn't take it down, they would prosecute him. So they bullied him. And so that was what it was like in 2007. Bit by bit, we started doing things like this. You know, this is a mural all about aspiration. It was so scary painting that top bit on a slope. And it was, it was a, an area where council had been regularly painting out this little bit. Um, Every, every second day they would paint that out, and it's not been damaged substantially since. Um, it's a, a wave of positive energy, um, fundamentally. And the little panda that was there before, we painted him a little boat. Um, and um, the most significant political thing of it was actually we took the street sign down, took it away, repainted it, put it back. And it's that taking possession of your public space. And signage is telling you what to do all the time. So... We start to play with that. This is in a street drinking, street drinking area, um, and you're there going. And this is all hard work. It does work because seven years later, we are now talking to the council, and there are some enlightened people amongst them, and they go, "Well, actually, you can do anything you like with the backside of the signs." And so we're now going to be doing the backside of the signs all the way through Stokes Croft. So it's all about push. Um, Dutch artists pitched up, um, 
very busy road, so he couldn't believe that we could just do that in the street and paint the phone box. And we said, well, if we clean it well enough beforehand and take it before and after one, I'll take the wrap. And nobody ever goes against you when you've got those before and after pictures. Politics. Um, this is a... Our area was a conservation area. Tesco came to town. Um, we didn't want Tesco's. Um, we squatted the building. The, the police found they had to um, take order. Um, they backed up the fundamentally the robber barons who come along. The, what do they call them? The guys who chuck you out. I can't remember the word, but anyway. Um, they're the ones, bailiffs, robber barons, yes. Um, we did all the right thing, protested, murals happened. This is quite funny because in that bag, in that mural, somebody put two cans of Tesco lager in there just to finish off a piece It lasted 30 seconds. Um, but the art was following the politics. This is a mural we painted, because um, it's a very deprived area. This is a mural we painted, um, this is painted by Paris, on uh, what is a... Um, um, what do they call it? Um, legal advice for the disadvantaged. Um, citizens, advice. citizens, that type of thing. Yeah, it's uh, sorry about that. Um, advice bureau. No, it wasn't that. It's a legal advice centre. But yeah, anyway, it's um, a, a law centre, even a Bristol law centre. So we started to use the murals for the politics, and this. So, in the battle with the council, you know, this cost us. 500 quid to do, 300 pounds worth of scaffolding, 200 pounds of paint. Um, you can see the story of what's going to come in the artwork. That is just, you know, the walls are speaking, the walls have the voice. And, you know, what is actually happening is that the people are beginning to realise that, you know, actually what's on the walls determines the way your city goes. And so we took that scribble in the last picture and made it look like a proper sign, gave it some authority. And then it's quite interesting, that happened next. And then that happened next, which is really quite interesting. And then that happened next. Um, and then the following week, that happened next. And that's really very powerful. And the art is absolutely central to what has gone on there. And, you know, um, this, after it all finished and they, tur they, they won their account. They, they, won, they got in there because the council didn't have the nerve to stand up for its community that had done its surveys and found that 93% did not want that place there. Um, and that mural is still there today and it's still having a massive effect. And I think actually that was at the zenith of Tesco's... Demise. It was at the, the zenith and from that point on it clearly gone downhill. Meantime, we're doing all sorts of stuff. This is a derelict built... Um, oh, we've moved on to that one. This. So, council had nothing to do with that. We put that up um, in 2010. You know, so playing with si signage, and it's aspirational. So, um, this is Godwin. Uh, Godwin's building, he's a complete dude. He was in the uh, aesthetic movement. Um, am I going on too long, by the way, Marcus? You're right. So this is done in the style of E. W. Godwin, who built this derelict building, and this is currently in the we're in the middle of a massive community fight to stop it being taken over by developers, because all of the stuff that we've done has made that place so sexy that now they want it. They want it. So in this in the roundabout. We started to put up panels. We blacked two grand off um, Destination Bristol, who are a corporate. They run all the Bristol websites. That's why you always get sent to the Marriott if you go to Bristol. Um, but we managed to black two grand off them, and we started to put panels in the bear pit. Um, this one is a huge stencil that we cut that came from a tiny paper cut from one of the Jamaica Street artists. Um, and so we now have this one panel that is a stencil that whenever anybody tags it all over, we redo it. Relentless optimism. And we've just done it in the last week in the colours of the NHS protests. So, you know, the art is feeding on each other. This bear, when we blag the money off the art council, this is 
uh, the cube is just over here now. This bear has become a massive symbol of bottom-up change. It's all made out of bits and bats of wood that came from scrapyards scrap and, and um, where all the developers were wrecking the rest of the city, we'd go and get their boards and their wood, their scrap wood, and that's what we built. And it's 16 foot tall and it stands on the gateway to the city. And then at night, we managed to blag, this is Western Paris, this is Cabot Circus here, a big monstrosity of um, corporate shopping centre where it's illegal to walk, uh, it's not illegal to walk, but it's illegal to photograph, it's illegal to cycle, it's illegal to smoke in the streets. So what you've got is this battle, push and pull. You know, in, in London in the 1800s, it was illegal to go into certain areas. They were gated communities. So we've got this push and pull going on all of the time. Business plan. Four angels have bought this building. We're going to have a community share issue, and the community will own this property. And we are already, last night we had, um, I think it's called Fed Up, a, a documentary about um, the pernicious nature of sugar. Um, tomorrow we open an exhibition where we will have some of the artwork in the gallery. It, it will be in, it's in the far end of the building. And some of it will sit in the street and be 400 pounds of canvas and stay in the street until Christmas. And we'll see what happens. Self-help. This is really interesting. The you know, I've slagged the council off a lot, but in the doing of this, it has changed the way they are thinking. So this is underneath the M32, and these are the spaces that we can get hold of easily. Somebody painted all these a colour off their own bat. They just did it. Um, all these uh, ramps, it's just local members of the community built them and put them there. And the, uh, I, my understanding, talking to the guys who skate down there, is that actually what happens is if the council had to license it with all their bureaucracy and all that malarkey, it would never happen, so they just look the other way. That's actually what is happening. And this is right next to IKEA, which is just over there in Tesco. And, you know, those big corporate powers are the reason that you've got your communities smashed up. So this is where the fight back starts. So, um, the organic nature of putting up the NHS thing, we just put a shout out. Um, all of those panels, people can just pitch up and paint what they think. So here we have, if everyone, including all corporations, paid their taxes, we could afford the NHS and then austerity. You know, that's advertising, but as it's advertising from the people. Um, and a Noam Chomsky quotation on the way to Broadney. How cool is that? So that's it. It's all about, you know, actually, you know, we, we have got to follow the money. The money is important, and, but you can do a hell of a lot with very little, you know? You can do a lot with very little. And, you know, it's interesting, that thing with the Arts Council, we, we, um, it, the Bear Pit Group, which is not PRC, has twice applied, and I, I have a role as a director down there, has twice applied for the Arts Council grant funding. And the first time, we just basically ignored all the things we'd say we were going to do, because how can you know what you're going to do six months before you're going to do it? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. So, you know, after seven years, we've built up the trust, and we've over-delivered, and we were successful in getting a follow-up grant. But actually, in your interactions with those organisations, you've actually got to be teaching them and be more confident and work out ways of building an alternative economy. I mean, that cube next year, it's going to be European green capital. That's all going to be about the climate. So the next thing you'll see on there, there will be a big, massive Naomi Klein-style um, four-sided cube, which will talk about system change, not climate change, that will talk about capitalism versus the climate, and that will be the theme throughout the year. And to have that in the middle of the city where it actually makes a difference to people's ways of thinking is absolutely essential. There you go. That's something. That was